Steve, this is what grass would look like if you've never mowed your lawn. Okay. It would actually get up to be about 18 inches tall. And I'm going to pull this one out. You can see how the stem grew up. And as it got older and older, finally it set all these seeds on the very top. Now all those seeds are going to fall down into your juniper and you're going to get all new grass growing from the seeds. Well, this is causing me a lot of headaches and a lot of back aches. What can we do to remedy this problem? Well, the first thing we're going to do is going to be mechanical. We're going to edge the bed. Okay. Now to make the edge on the bed, we're going to use a half moon edger. What we're going to do is just go up and we're going to create a line on the bed. So we're going to pick a spot drive in as deep as we can and lift up. Don't flick that stuff up into the bed because if you do it'll just root there and create more problems. Gotcha. So just pick a spot with me and we're gonna make a straight line. What we're actually doing Steve is defining the edge so on this end I'm gonna wrap this around so that it meets up with the driveway at a 90 degree angle. That looks good. Now what I want to do is remove this grass to create an air barrier between the lawn and the bed. And I'm simply gonna pry it up, take it out of the bed, and put it in the wheelbarrow. What we've actually done is dug a trench. Now that trench is gonna create airspace between the lawn and the bed. So what's gonna happen is as a plant starts to grow, the little rhizome's gonna come out and try to go into the bed but because of this airspace, it's gonna dry out and die, so we won't get any more growth into here. Perfect. The trick is to maintain that edge and keep a nice, clean-looking bed line here. Okay, and what are our options for that? Well, the first option is to use a string trimmer. Now, most people use a string trimmer horizontally like this, but when you go to do this maintenance, you're gonna turn it vertical, you're gonna come right along that edge and keep a nice, clean edge all the way down. Okay. Now, another way is with a physical barrier. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to install a steel edging. Hence the trench. All right. This is the steel edging we're going to be using. This is pretty heavy duty stuff. Where do you get this, Raj? I got it at my landscape professional center. It cost about $4 a foot. We have 50 feet here. We're going to use $200 worth. But I think it's going to be well worth it. Once it's in place, it's going to make no maintenance on the edge of these beds. What we're going to do is slide it in place and curve it if you grab the end up there, pull it in, in. I'm going to take and line this up the driveway and that's where we're going to start. At the end of each run we have double pockets in which these steel stakes will go in and they'll allow us to join two pieces together because it overlaps the next one. But here next to the driveway it helps me out because it's going to make sure that when I bang the steel stake in it's going to hold that down below the edge of the driveway. Let me show you how these two pieces of steel join together. If I take the top one and line it up with the bottom one, now you just put the stakes through the two pockets and they'll make together. All right, let's see how our last piece fits in. I'm gonna drop it in, you got your stakes. There you go. Now the steel edging is going to keep the grass from your lawn from getting into the bed. That's great. And this looks great, but what about this grass that's already growing in here? What do I do about that, Roger? You could come out here and pull forever and you'd never get it all out of the bed. So I want to treat it with an herbicide called Glyphos 8. All right, that's a non-selective herbicide, meaning whatever plant material it touches, it's going to kill. Including my junipers? If you got it on the junipers. If you came out here with a sprayer and got it on the junipers, yes. But we're going to apply it in such a way that it only gets on the grass. That's great. Now I fluff up the grass so it's standing nice and tall. And then I'm literally going to go and paint the herbicide just on the tops of the grasses. You don't have to go down all the way down into the roots. So you start. Don't wait for me. Now the way the glyphosate works is it blocks an enzyme that's important in a chemical reaction for the plant to grow. Okay. By using these foam brushes, we're applying the absolute bare minimum amount of herbicide and still will get good results. 
The other thing is you want to make sure you put it on on a dry day because we want this herbicide to dry on the foliage, not get washed off. Okay. How long does it take for it to kill this grass? It'll actually kill the grass in 24 hours, but you won't see the browning, the results, for four or five days. Now, do we have to pull that up by hand once it's dead? Nope, it's all going to decompose. Nice. Oh, this is great. Now I'm going to keep my grass in the lawn and out of the juniper. Thanks for your help, Raj. It's going to look great. Mm -hmm.